On April 15, 1865, then-President Abraham Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater by John Wilkes Booth during a production of Our American Cousin. Present at this tragedy was Lincoln's wife, Mary, as well as Henry Rathbone and his fiancée, Clara. Henry Reed Rathbone was a Union Army major in the Civil War, and he and his wife were invited to the play after as many as six other invitees were unable to attend. The Civil War had effectively ended just five days prior, and thus it was a celebratory time. When the play was in the second scene of its third act, Booth at this time entered the presidential box. He waited for a line he knew would cause the audience to erupt in laughter, and in the uproar, he took his chance and shot Lincoln in the back of the head. The audience stopped laughing. Smoke from Booth's gun filled the box, but Rathbone could still see the attacker. He lunged at him, and they grappled. Booth took out his knife and gave Rathbone a nasty cut several inches deep from his shoulder to his elbow. Luckily, the cut missed his brachial artery, which would have brought certain death, but he was still bleeding fast. Booth released himself from Rathbone's grasp and made the 12-foot leap onto the stage below. Rathbone shouted for somebody to stop him, but at the time, Booth was a famous actor and many thought this was all just part of the play. Booth escaped out the back door and would remain a fugitive for 12 days before being caught. Rathbone diverted his attention to Lincoln. He could hear people trying to enter the box, but Booth had set up a wooden plank to bar the door shut. After several attempts, the plank was successfully removed and three doctors entered the room to help Lincoln. Clara embraced her fiancé, covering her face, hands, and soaking her dress in his blood. After some examination, they decided Lincoln should be taken to the Peterson house across the street. The doctors, assisted by Henry and Clara, laid Lincoln on a bed all too small for his size. Once the doctors had taken control of the situation, Rathbone collapsed from his blood loss. Clara stayed with Mary for a while, and Rathbone was taken home. Lincoln died in the Peterson house the next day. Lincoln's assassination haunted Rathbone for the rest of his life. In 1867, he went on to marry Clara and have three children with her, one of them, ironically, sharing Lincoln's birthday of February 12th. He resigned from the army and lived in Washington, D.C., frequently visiting Europe in search of medical treatment for Rathbone's chronic dyspepsia, a stomach ailment that he struggled with for years after the assassination. It took 17 years for his arm wound to heal, and he was never able to regain full use of it. Difficulty breathing, heart palpitations, and constant headaches are just some more struggles to add to the growing list of physical problems that plagued Rathbone. But what suffered most of all was his mental health. Rathbone became irrational, anxious, and suspicious. Over time, he became convinced that his wife was going to try to leave him and take their three children with her. He was depressed, and some people called him erratic. He became dangerous, and his sanity only continued to spiral downwards. The Rathbone family eventually settled in Germany, and on the dawn of Christmas Eve, 1883, everything Rathbone was dealing with peaked in one climactic event. There are many varying accounts of what took place, but this is the basic narrative of what went down. Very early in the morning, Henry went into his wife's bedroom. He was fully clothed, and he claimed he wanted to be with the children. What happened next was a horrible parallel to what had happened 18 years before. Whether Henry used a revolver, a knife, or both is a topic of debate, but no matter how it was carried out, Rathbone murdered his wife killing her like Booth had killed Lincoln. He then took the knife and stabbed himself six times. However, once again he survived, as he had survived Booth's blade. Some stories claim Clara was awake, and that she was attempting to calm Henry down, that she had locked the children in another room to keep them safe. Some claim a maid and the sister of the lady of the house were awake and witnessed the crime. 
Despite these varying accounts, the point remains that Rathbone and his deteriorating mental health lashed out at his family and killed his wife, attempting to take his own life in the process. Clara was buried in Germany and Henry was admitted to an insane asylum. He lived there in continual suffering, claiming the other inmates were conspiring against him and that the walls were rigged with spray apparatus that blew out dust and gas. He would die there 28 years later on August 14, 1911. He was buried near his wife. Their son, Henry Riggs Rathbone, would grow up to be a U.S. congressman, and he proposed in 1928 that the government should turn the Ford's Theater into a museum. The theater today looks precisely as it did that night in 1865, with all of the same furnishings and lighting. Perhaps most interesting about this story is what ended up happening to the dress that Clara Harris wore that night. While they were living in Albany, Germany, Clara had the dress hung up in a closet, unwashed, untouched, soaked in blood. She obviously wasn't going to wear the dress again, but she didn't want to burn it. The closet was closed off and bricked in. It became a hidden, tomb-like resting place for the garment and the grim event it represented. The dress stayed there for many years, even after the Rathbones had left Albany and moved to Hanover. Residents and guests of the house have said that on the anniversary of the assassination, they would have a dream where they would see a sobbing young woman covered in blood-soaked clothing. Clara herself had this dream in this house, exactly one year after that eventful night. In 1910, just one year before his father's death, Henry Riggs Rathbone broke down the bricked-up closet and burned the dress that hadn't been worn in 45 years, claiming the white satin dress had cursed his family. Later, in 1952, in accordance with the German cemetery's policy regarding graves long unvisited, the remains of Clara and Henry Rathbone were dug up and disposed of. The whereabouts of their remains are unknown. Lincoln's assassination is one of the most well-known events in U.S. history, but the fates of the guests in the presidential box are a story that is not often touched upon. It's an important part of the overarching story that's tragic, layered, and, above all, ironic. On April 15, 1865, John Wilkes Booth didn't just take the life of Abraham Lincoln, but he also took the lives of Clara and Henry Reed Rathbone as well.